to the I Ching Cafe. My name is Belinda Dabston. Wonderful that you were here with me for our weekly overview. Our I Ching overview for the week commencing the 18th of March 2024. Before we get stuck into this week's overview, you know the story. We look back, we cast our minds back to reflect on the week that has just gone past. Looking at what the I Ching was asking us to dial into, the energy, the frequency that was peaking okay on the radar and asking us to tune in and work with it this week we had our energy of 19 approach okay the powerful energy coming to bless that which is small us and working with opening up and welcoming it working with some interesting changing lines all right crying at the funeral remember that of parts of us being released and the spirit coming back and our task is just to Take them back in. Yes, yes, celebrate it and move forward and get going with this wonderful energy because the doors open. Power has come back to us to help us, plus reaching out to do that for others too. And we had deliverance. Yes, overcoming something, realizing how much we have done and achieved and that we have survived and we've got through the difficulty and we can now move slowly as we get ready for the next phase. So for you, what on earth did it mean for you? What was the energy that was popping up into your life that was focusing you on deliverance and on this approach and the ability to put all the shards of ourselves that have energy locked into them to release them and bring that energy back in and build a stronger foundation. So if there is anything that came up for you last week, please do share. We learn a lot through everyone's comments on their experience of working with the I Ching. Right, this week, let's get into it. What is the I Ching asking us to pay attention to? I must say, this is going to be a little challenging, but we can do it. You know we can. Our first hexagram is a returning friend, like we had last week. 18, the work on what has been spoiled. So last week's episode, you remember I mentioned that hexagram 40 was in the week of the 26th of February. That week, we also had 18, work on what has been spoiled. And here we have last week, deliverance comes back. This week, 18 comes back. Clearly, there are things we are still working through. There are layers to the chaos, okay? We are not done. The wonderful thing with working with these hexagrams, okay? This is my positive spin, okay, when we have challenging hexagrams, is that they bring us energy to do the doing, okay? I found that in the week we had the 18, right? At the end of February, the energy was there to get it organized, okay? Yes, it was painful. Yes, there were areas I didn't like, but the energy came in. Okay, it wasn't like we were trying to get organized when the energy was a dissipating energy. No, the energy is about helping us create the order. So if we just lean into and work with this hexagram this week, we can get a lot further because the energy is already giving us a woman to get it done. So 18, work and what has been spoiled, you know the story, is a very weedy garden okay full of weeds and in this case we're saying weeds are things we don't want to tolerate okay there are corruptions in our beautiful orderly zen garden we want to create absolute order in our lives and weeds represent poor weeds the chaos right old things neglect issues from the past unresolved things unfinished things paperwork taxes all right filing lots of clothes that are in the closet that we don't wear anymore just chaos okay we all have an aspect of our lives where there is chaos right where we have let things go to seed because we haven't put in the energy and there's that scientific saying that everything tends towards entropy right if we don't put energy into keeping things orderly naturally things evolve into chaos we have to put the energy in it's like a machine you have to put energy in to turn the flywheel okay it doesn't just go by itself that would be perpetual energy wouldn't that be amazing that's not how our current understanding of physics works you have a flywheel you have a machine you have cogs and you have to have something that puts energy in to maintain the system okay where we take our foot off the gas in one area and we focus on another area this area slows down and starts to get rusty and it comes to a grinding halt, and then there's a big drama trying to get it all fired up again. That's the story of our lives. We all have one, two, three, or more areas where this chaos has been allowed to take 
root, okay, where the issue has gone to seed. This hexagram gives us a blessing, gives us the opportunity to deal with it, even if we don't want to, and do something about it. Okay, so that is our task for this week. Now, like we had in that last week of February, we have three changing lines. Only one of them is a shared one. And so we have changing lines in position two, five, and six. Six is the one that we had the last time. That's the common one. Line two. This one is called mistakes of the mother. <laughs> okay, maybe this is mistakes of your actual mother, okay, or mistakes of your mothering. But what this line talks about is issues related to weakness. Okay, so the idea is mother energy being yin, okay, being weak, okay, not women being weak, but just let's stay focused on the energy of yin, the, the yin energy being weak, and if it's not in balance, okay, what it can happen is it can peter out, right, so what happens is mistakes of the past from weakness, from not being tough when tough was needed, you know, not being dad when dad was needed, but being mom, and letting slide, and things will work out in the end, and all that kind of energy that goes with weakness okay so what happens is what we have to deal with is we have to deal with the results of issues from a situation that was too weak okay there weren't boundaries put in place or there weren't issues resolved when they should have or it just got left or it just it wasn't dealt with okay this can also be issues of the past related to a lack of care and nourishment okay we all have aspects of ourselves where we have this inner decay because there's an area of our life that has been starved okay whether it's the way that we were brought up or our experiences or relationships, or whatever it is, we've all got an area where we're learning how to nourish a part of ourselves that has experienced severe malnourishment on whatever level that takes place. So it can also apply to that. How do we deal with this? What's the strategy? Okay, the strategy is we approach the problem of yin with yin energy. Okay, so we don't go in there and with our swords, okay, full of our male energy, Ah, chop, chop, solve the problem. No, we go into the center of the issue. Okay, so firstly, we have to know what the issue is. We go into the issue and then we work out from there and we work through the situation with gentleness. Okay, so whatever this is that you tune into this week, work with, once you spot it, once you see, oh, this is an area of weakness, I just never wanted to talk about this thing. I never wanted to have this conversation. I always changed the topic when I had an opportunity to say what really needed to be said. Those kinds of things where you see that and you realize and you tune into that, the way we deal with it is not going in with the sword. No. Okay. We go into the center of the thing and we go outwards from there and we resolve it and we take action from a yin female energy, from a mother point of view, in mother balance okay so that is position two how we deal with that so we might find for your week these three lines relate to three different issues all three different facets of the same issue just be open to what it is you're needing to work with so our next one in line five okay this is mistakes and issues of the long past due to the father okay specifically neglect okay this is the idea of the distant father or the father who's gone away, okay, and is left behind the brood. Okay, we're turning it into a story here. And so the roots of the issue are in the long distant past and it's related to neglect, related to the father absconding his duties. So this might be your power absconding his duties, neglecting an issue, not bringing your power to the situation that you should have. Okay, different energy to the idea of weakness being the cause. Here, there is neglect, okay? The father hasn't done what he's supposed to do. In, we're talking about male energy here, okay? And maybe this is part of your healing with your biological or your family father where there was neglect, okay? They absconded, okay? What does that mean for you? What does that mean in terms of what's happening for you this week with this energy, okay? Where is the weakness of the father in a way, the issue? So the way we deal with this, the strategy for this aspect is we realize we can't do it ourselves. <laughs> okay. Old issue, long standing, uh, beyond our reach to solve immediately by our own, uh, on our own steam. 
And so what we do, we rope in helpers and we mobilize people. We mobilize people that can help us and we get the job done that way. We fix the problem because we've brought in other people to help us. So it's an interesting changing line. It's perhaps beyond our reach to solve immediately. Maybe bringing in helpers can also be about talking about an issue, you know, creating perspective, problem solving, brainstorming. You know, there's lots of different ways these lines can play out for us. And I think that we all experience them in very different ways. So just keep your radar open to where this needs to bring you what you need. Okay, then our third one, right at the top, line six, same as that line we had at the end of February. And this says, step beyond the politics, okay? Focus on principle, focus on the greatness of the human spirit. Put that at the center of your mind. Focus on the greatness that is possible, that we can demonstrate the wonderful things that is humanity. We can demonstrate a higher principle. And you just focus on that and move forward with that vision and keep moving forward. So it's a very interesting line where, you know, the, the line of the Holy Sage sits at the top there. The one who has done everything in the world is beyond the physical world and is kind of moving on to higher things and sometimes turns around and helps those of us who are still trying to grow and learn and overcome. And when we get to this point, our focus is, despite everything we see, focus on the highest good in the situation, the highest principle, the highest enduring value we can see in the moment and focus on that as a way of overcoming the spoiled, okay, is bringing that energy to the situation. Three very interesting lines. Weakness of the mother, okay, gently solving it, but solving it and tackling it with gentleness. Okay, weakness of the father, and then neglect the abscondment of duties, not putting power in when power was necessary, not being firm, not bringing masculine energy to the situation, Get in the helpers because you can't do it alone. And this idea of really getting to a point of where you face a situation. You're looking at the situation from a bird's eye view. Focus on the highest enduring value that you can see in the situation and give that energy and move forward with that. So what does that mean? Those three changing lines. Okay, what is our second hexagram? Our relating hexagram. Our path to victory. The thing that we can work with as a second strategy to maximize this week. Well, yep. 39, obstruction. Okay. The hexagram, big boulder in the road. Okay, here we go. We're on hiking on our path and we're whistling and we're going along. And then, whoa, massive boulder. Can't get through it. Now, we can bash our heads against this thing. Okay. Bringing our old tools, all right, trying to force it, trying to really put our muscle behind it but this thing is far bigger than us okay it's come to bring us to a stop we are injured okay so another part of this meaning might be accepting the injury recognizing we're injured we're incapacitated okay and that might be not having the right resources or not having time or literally having a physical injury where we can't walk or we can't get up or whatever it might be there's something here that's gone stop okay how we deal with that is we don't keep on bashing okay, against the obstruction, hoping that by doing it over and over and over, it's going to change anything. No, stop. Take a few steps back. Call in your friends. Okay, call in the helpers. In a way, we had helpers in one of our changing lines, didn't we? And we find a way around the obstacle. Okay, we get creative. We accept the obstacle. That's the first thing is acceptance. There's a block in our road and we have to accept that it's here. Okay, so now how do we get creative now? How do we work together, all right, to form a human ladder, right, up this side and across this way and across that way and working our way around the obstacle? Okay, so it calls us to accept the stoppage, be at peace, there's a stop, there's a no, there's a door, it's closed. We can experience this in so many ways, be open to it. Now what do we do? Okay. Find an alternative way around. Get creative. Get your friends together. Get your helpers. Get experts. Get mentors. To mobilize and find another way to keep going. And that's what the learning is. We are learning how to be agile and to find new ways to deal with a stop. And we all have experienced where we have a door that closes. 
And if we just give it time, if we just give it some creative energy, we find other ways. And when we look back, we're like, oh, goodness, that door was never for me. If that door had opened and had gone through, it would never have turned out as well as it has turned out. We've all had that experience of hindsight and realizing that the stops were sometimes the best gifts we could ever receive. So thank the stoppage, thank the obstacle, thank the boulder. Thank you, boulder. <laughs> when you see it, thank you, thank you. Now, how do I strategize a way around this? How do I get creative? How do I enlist the people who I know and trust, who have skills, perhaps in areas outside of my domain, that we can find new ways around this problem? And that is the journey. That's the victory that we can bring this week. So there's work, there's gardening, there's weeds, okay? There's corruption, there's decay. It's all right. The benefit that comes, okay, is we find a way around the obstacle. And maybe this giant boulder is just reminding you an obstacle that's already there. Not necessarily a new thing that comes to put an obstacle in your way, but is tuning you into the obstacle that's there right now and bringing you a new tool, a new way of how to navigate around it. Because you can. You've got to help us. Thank you so much. Good luck with this week. We always grow a lot when the hexagrams are challenging. So let's look forward to it. Let's put our energy into it and support each other as we go through it together. And of course, if this was valuable, nice like or a thumbs up. And of course, if you're new, subscribe or follow on the podcast if you are into podcasts. And I look forward to seeing you soon in our next weekly overview. Until then, have a wonderful week. Mm-hmm.